hello everyone welcome to first training tutorial for apm i have finally got time to create video tutorials for apm and let's see what we are going to have a look at in this session so in this session we will see some of the basics of apm i hope you know what apm is but we would just touch upon on some of them to get started with apm and we will run our first apm test on android uh, mobile browser that's going to be uh, the Chrome browser which we would use to run APM test on an Android device. So, so what is APM? Well, uh, as you might know, APM is nothing but uh, another library, an automation library like WebDriver which can be used to automate the operations on the mobile devices. It could be either mobile app or mobile web on both iOS as well as Android. What we can do using APM is again similar to what we can do using web drivers so we can automate the operations on a mobile device now in case of software testing we are going to use apm to drive some workflows and write some assertions and find out whether application works as it is supposed to be or not now there is lots of documentation available about apm on apm.io you can have a look at that i have also some tutorials on my blog on seleniumtest.com so you could also have a look at this. I have tried to curtail down the information found from various sources on this blog. Now, before we get started with APM, we need to understand uh, something called APM desktop or uh, um, some, some sort of application which is used to run uh, APM test. So what APM desktop is, uh, well, as its name indicates, it's a desktop application. This can be used on Windows or on mac uh, systems what it does is it it's a sort of wrapper for the apm server now what is apm server well apm server can be compared with something called selenium server wherein selenium server exposes the uh, rest api to be able to interact with the uh, different web browsers and what apm server does is it also exposes the rest api which can be used to interact with the application under test apm server itself is written on node.js so I have already installed APM desktop on uh, this system so I would show you how it looks like so this is uh, uh, this is APM desktop uh, application and using this we can something called uh, start the APM server this can also be used to inspect elements this can be used to define some capabilities we would see APM desktop in details in future sessions when we start uh using it to inspect the elements to be able to find out different element locators on the mobile app and to be able to derive test using those element locators but for now let's uh, just have a brief look on these different features so this is the avm desktop here we have the advanced uh, section to define the server uh, address which is going to the local host in this case some more settings for ios and android we can also edit uh, configuration here, which is about the Java path, which I have, yes, and the Android home, which is right over here. And let me close this. There is still something called preset, which could be used to define, predefine the settings here, and then they can be saved in, and then APM could be started using these preset values. Now, we also have something called uh, inspect element, which, uh, we should be able to see somewhere here. Hmm. I am not sure where the inspect section is gone. So we don't want to do a start. We don't want to do edit configuration. Uh, we had seen this earlier. Uh, this edit configuration is also the same anyways don't worry we will have a look at um, uh, inspect element capabilities in the future so uh, let's park it for now so what i would do is i would just start the apm server here using the start server button and it would start the apm server on my local host let me change it to local host and here it is uh, so server is up and running now what I'm doing here is I'm going to use uh, Android device to run test on Chrome browser on an Android device. But since um, I'm recording this session on my 
uh, Mac machine I would also want to show it to you and how I have done that is uh, I have done this using something called visor so if I go back to the agenda visor is uh, one free application which can be used to mirror the device on the um, on the Mac or on the PC so I have already installed this and uh, if I launch the visor you would be able to see my mobile device here so yeah this is my mobile device whatever operations I do here you would be able to see what's going on on my mobile device so you are not left in dark as to what tests are being run and so on now before uh, you could really use this uh, be sure that you need to enable something called developer mode on the Android device and you also need to enable something called USB debugging I have described these options in details on another blog which I'm going to link uh, on um, the post I'm going to make after this uh, about this session so you could uh, enable the developer mode and also enable the USB debugging to be able to see what's going on on my device as well as have APM control the device uh, we, what we also need is we have to install something called ATB which is Android debug bridge it's, uh, it's a sort of command line tool which helps uh, communicate uh, with emulator as well as Android devices I'm using here Android device and how you can install this uh, this is also described in another blog post which I'm going to link in this uh, session as well now once you have installed ADB or Android debug bridge you can simply do ADB devices on the command line and you would be able to see the devices which are connected with ADB so if I go to my you know, my system uh, command prompt here and do ADB devices I see list of devices are attached and this is one device which is attached right now and then next we would well execute the test so we have the APM server here I would start it in a while again I have ADB set up so I can see the devices attached using ADB devices and then I need to execute the Android uh, web test one thing I encountered is that uh, we cannot use something called ID and name which we used in web automation very frequently for Android automation as well because of uh, one issue which is described here again I'm going to link it uh, to the blog post so what happens here is uh, in case of APM uh, there is uh, some change with respect to what element locators could be used and what is allowed as element locator is only the CSS and the XPath locators which are described here so I had to change one of the application locator to be able to run test to CSS and that locator is uh, in Android web test so let's see this class Android web test mm, it's right over here yep so what I do here is I launch a registration page we have seen the registration form many a times in past and what I had to do was I had to modify this element locator first name it was using locate by name I had to update it to locate by CSS selector and what this test does is it launches the registration form and then it does assertion on whether the title is right or not which means whether we have reached the right page or not and then I also added some more elements on the testng.xml file which is one more test element which is right over here this is for Android mobile site test so I have test type as web browser is Android here server URL is my local host automation name is APM platform is Android device name is the device name which we get from ADB devices here and then browser name is Chrome command timeout is 120 parallel is false because I'm not running test in parallel and the class name is the test which we had a look a while ago so let's get started let's run this test so I would uh, first start the APM server yeah so you can see here the logs for the APM server and next let's also see the visuals so we um, let me bring visio up uh, I think it's called visor not visio that's a different uh, tool so yeah visor and as you can see this is my 
mobile device and now we would start the test run so let's do that i would uh, try to minimize this so we can see both yep, my mobile device as well as the test run and i would hit the run button here and you will see that it would launch the mobile browser here hopefully and you can see in the background you know these commands are being run okay so the browser is being launched and then this is a registration page and as you see the test run was successful a very simple test about launching the registration form and verifying the title you can build up more and more tests on this like you would usually do with the other web driver test for web browser just here we are using the mobile uh, browser instead of the web browser and here in the background there are lots of locks of APM server being posted on um, the server or the APM desktop application which we have here. Uh, this These locks are very useful because when I was trying to set this whole application up, uh, I had lots of errors and very, very, very important details were being posted here. So if you find some errors on the test run, then have a look at what is going on on the server side log. By the way, uh, I referred first uh, about inspect element and inspect element is here. So we have to start the APM server to be able to see the inspector here. And then this could be used uh, to inspect the elements on the mobile app, for example. Uh, just a hint, we would look into this in more details in the future session when we talk about uh, automating uh, mobile apps. So let's just close this for now. Let's see. What else do we have to cover on this session? Yeah, so this was all for this session. We had a small intro of APM. We have installed APM desktop app to be able to start the APM server. We use Visor to be able to mirror device to the PC. Not required, it's not a step you would do, but I did this for sake of demo. So you just need APM desktop app. You have to have ADB, Android debug bridge to be able to communicate with the device uh, on which you want to run the test and then run the Android web test. As usual, I'm going to commit this set of tests also on my GitHub repo. Again, going to be linked uh, on the description of this video as well as on the blog post. So you can download it, clone it, and try it out yourself. This is all for this session. I hope you find it useful. And if so, then please hit the like button. See you on next session. Bye-bye. Take care.